the you know, the deduction um, you know will be correct either way whether it's moves left or right or whatever but just to have it uh, in some sort of, sort of sync with the uh, drawing itself so they are your um, your your deductions applied again you can have a look at that in uh, 3d if needs be just to allow you to see um, that the openings are in fact on the walls and so forth I'm going to turn on my lent mode and then I would need to go uh, to my shape results and uh, annotate um, and then amend if I needed to change line colors, shading and so forth. Uh, once you are done, you can then, um, obviously I could take off other rooms and apply openings on those other rooms within the same drawing screen if needs be. Uh, you then can just exit and save, and back into the calculation sheet will come uh, your your takeoff with the deductions uh, that you'd applied. Now, if um, there was a case of uh, uh, the same uh, oak uh, being applied a number of times through the drawing, you would get a factor applied here two times if there's two, um, two doors of the same size, or um, three windows of the same size with the factor three in there as well. Um, so uh, that is, uh, again, uh, how uh, deductions are applied. Just to recap a little bit on that, I'm just going to activate the VTOS module again and uh, just uh, explain that uh, your schedule of openings is uh, inserted by using the door, um, the icon with the door and the window on it on the toolbar. And that is how you go about setting up your schedule of openings. Uh, and they can be appended to at any point in time and um, should there be an opening up in there that you require. And as I say, this list or schedule of openings will be available to you in all jobs at all times. So I'll just uh, exit out again there and uh, let that come back. Okay, and then um, what I want to do here is um, give, you, give you an example of how you would take off curve work. Now in this example, we're going to use um, a PDF file. And this would go back to one of the questions that came in earlier on, uh, how is the scale set? What I can do is, um, uh, as before, just drill down behind um, the, uh, the description I've given into the calculation sheet. Uh, I'll call this uh, boat bow. Um, I'm just going to amend that uh, to boat bow one. And as before, you activate the VTOS module uh, at the section and build stuff that you want to do your return your take on. So um, I'll bring that up. Um, again, what, what I'm going to do is uh, on the status bar indicate the type of takeoff that I want to do. So in this instance, I want to do a lineal type takeoff, linear meters, and as before, line color, line thickness, and so forth. Uh, immediately go to load my drawing. And uh, this isn't on my, uh, on my list, um, so I can browse using, um, using this uh, icon here, current image file. So I can click on that. I then get my uh, browse dialog box, and I can go off wherever my drawing is. And you can see in this instance I'm using a boat, and it is a bitmap. When you use a, a, an image file that uh, per se isn't a CAD file, i.e. doesn't have uh, inbuilt intelligence, when you click OK and you tick, place a tick beside the drawing that you want to show, the minute, um, the minute you, you, you bring up on screen um, a drawing that, as I say, does not contain a, um, a, a, an inbuilt scale, which all, um, uh, let's call them dumb image files, which would be the likes of PDFs, bitmaps, JPEGs, uh, and any other GIFs, TIFFs, these, these sort of type files, this scale dialog box will pop up immediately asking you to uh, uh, manually set the scale. Now, the most uh, accurate way is the top option here, to draw a horizontal, a single horizontal line and a single vert vertical line, um, and tell the system what the dimension of those lines are. There's a question coming in there now. Uh, just a question uh, that's come in there. Our zoom function tends to be a bit slow or jumpy. 
does this depend on the side of the drawing load or, or is it the computer memory issue? Um, uh, generally, there's a couple of things there. Um, one, if you're, you know, some, of the, some of the CAD files can be um, you know, 10, 12, 14 megabytes. So it could be a combination of that or it could be a combination of the computer's resources. So yeah, you're on the right track there, but it, it can be it can be a combination of both really. Um, so just just to um, uh, come back to the the setting of the scale on, uh, in the in the um, let's call them the dumb images, PDFs, JPEGs, bitmaps, and so so forth. You must know uh, the length of at least two lines on the drawing before you can actually set the scale properly. Uh, and as I said. Although VTOS only really requires, um, it, it can set the scale with a single horizontal line or a single vertical line or a single di diagonal line. The most accurate way is to um, take off, or, you know, or to set um, or tell the system the length of two lines, one horizontal and one vertical. As you can see in this drawing, I have one dim on the horizontal there and one dim on the vertical there. So I just click OK. It says, please select a horizontal line. Okay. Um, now you could, at this point, use the zoom functions if needs be. Uh, I'm going to do this very quickly, and I'll just click on that line first, on that point there, and put in what the dim is on that line, and then select the vertical line, and that's just clicking on start, clicking on the end, and uh, putting in the dim of that line. By doing that you automatically calibrate each line that is displayed on the drawing. So it will accurately set the scale based on two known dimensions. Um, so sometimes that can be quite difficult to do when you're dealing with a, a, an image file that you receive. The image file itself may not contain uh, any uh, visible dims on the lines. Um, there is no easy way around that. You really have to, uh, firstly, before you can begin using that drawing file, you would have to determine uh, the length of two lines, one horizontal and one vertical, and then the system will, will calibrate. Now, um, if you wanted to perform this function on a CAD file, uh, if you had any doubt in your mind uh, that the scale that was set, which can happen in a CAD file, is incorrect, once you bring up the CAD file, the system will not prompt you, as it did there, uh, to draw a horizontal and vertical line. It assumes that the scale that's in the CAD file is correct. So if you have any doubt and you want to set the scale of a CAD file and overwrite it, um, you can go to the Draw menu bar item, and on the Draw menu bar item, um, there is an option there, scale from measure line. And once you activate that function, the same pop-up will come up. Draw a horizontal and vertical line, draw a horizontal line, draw a vertical line, or, or, or a diagonal line. So you can force the system, even with a CAD file, to accept the measurements that you have put in from two known lines. And that will, as such, overwrite uh, the scale that was embedded in the CAD file itself. So um, just to recap, when you're dealing with uh, files that are not CAD files, when you bring those up using the image load image option, the system will automatically prompt you to draw a horizontal and a vertical line. If you're dealing with CAD files, it will not. But if you have any doubt about the scale that's embedded, you can go to the draw drop down menu and activate the option by clicking on scale from measured line or measure line. So um, uh, I've set the scale by, by drawing that line, drawing that line and uh, indicating the dim. Um, so uh, what I then need to do is I need to use my zoom function to zoom in on the section of the drawing that I want to do a takeoff on. Now I want to show here how uh, uh, curved work can be, can be done. So uh, I'm going to take off this linear length here. So I'm just going to click on the zoom in on section of a plan. Come down, click, hold, drag, let go. Now, to begin um, your, your curved takeoff, you must tell the system that that is what you're doing. And that is done on the draw menu. 
draw a drop down menu and there's an option there curved section if you don't select that option and you draw a curved line every time you click on that curved line it will return an individual dim for every click whereas when you turn this curve section on and you begin which I will now I should really be putting smaller gaps in between these you know as such like this um, when you turn on the curve section option and that's a single linear length so I want to stop the line at that point so I right click uh, when I turn on the dimensioning you'll see you get one dim displayed for the entire linear length that is what in effect this draw curve section function does. It assumes that when you start until you turn that off that the, the line that you're drawing is uh, required to return one linear length. Now if it was a, a, an area type takeoff that had one side that was curved uh, and I don't have something on this drawing to show you that but um, what I'll do is um, I will uh, Oh, by the way, I should have mentioned there undo uh, prior to actually beginning this whole thing. Um, and you can see I undid that line there. Uh, simply to undo any takeoff that you've done, on the toolbar there, there is an icon with an arrow point to the left. Uh, that allows you to be able to undo what you've done. Also on the keyboard, as in uh, with all Windows applications, you can use Control-Z, uh, and Control-Z will undo last line. So if, as I say, just if it was an area type takeoff, and again, what I'll do is I'll go to my uh, takeoff type and I'll change it to area. And I'll go to my draw drop down menu and indicate that it's a curve section that I want to begin with. Again, I start my curve section and I'm going to do this very quickly, um, not to waste time. And when I'm done with my curve section, I go to my draw menu and I turn off curve section. And then I continue with the remainder of the area. And then once I get to join my first point to last, I hit J. But what you'll see has happened there is that the section of the area still has one dim. So, and that was simply activated by when I began to draw the curve section, I just went to the draw menu and then draw curve section. Uh, and once you begin then, uh, and then once you're at the end of the curve section, you as such turn it off. The system then knows that you are looking for one DIM for that curve section. Okay, um, so um, that hopefully explains a couple of things. One, uh, how to uh, take off, um, you know, normally quite difficult to take off work such as curve sections. Uh, how to turn it on when you need to draw a curve section. And how to turn it off once you're uh, complete on the particular curve section. You can also do that uh, curve section in uh, uh, area takeoff, lineal takeoff, vertical takeoff, uh, any 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 uh, any um, any takeoff that is available there. You can use the curve section in, and it is available on the draw down menu curve section. And as such, you turn it on when you come to your curve section, and you turn it off when you've completed the takeoff of that curve section. And um, once done, you can simply return your result back out of the system and into uh, the calculation sheet uh, as uh, with the other take. Uh, finally, and the last section uh, I'm going to look at is uh, 